I know that this idea started for you actually as a theater play, didn't it? What was the development of that and when did you decide that no, this, this had to be a movie? So like the two actors over here, I often work with and I'm very close with uh, stage actors and they would often suggest that I direct a theater production. Um, so I thought that because this story mostly takes place in two houses, it could work as uh, it could work on stage. But when I be began to write this story from the very first line, I keep thinking about where is the camera and what was <laughs> how big the frame size is. I very obsessionally keep thinking about camera and camera movement. So I, I, so I realized once again that it would be impossible for me to direct theater, um, that I am a filmmaker and I should just do films. We're glad you do, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see it. Um, I, I wanted to ask, I know your last two films were both international productions in English, uh, Snowpiercer and Okja. Did you know when you started this that it had to be a specifically Korean story? This has you, you. Um, to be honest, I first came up with this story and decided to do this project with the production company in 2013 when I was working on Snowpiercer. So it was already before Okja. Um, so it wasn't as if I intended to return to Korea after having done two English language projects. It's just naturally I came up with this story in that timeline. But I did um, want to feel free and be playful in my native language, um, working with Korean actors. That is what um, I did want that kind of process this time, and it was like that on set. It was uh, great fun. Uh, speaking of working with the actors, I, I wanted to ask the actors since we have them here. It's such a beautifully integrated ensemble. It's very well balanced. There's no no one lead. You're all. Everyone has a moment. Did you work? together before filming or did you all come up individually? What was the preparation process for, for the ensemble? So with the actress Lee jong over here, we did work on a project together, uh, but for most of the actors, it was our first time wa working together. And um, to be a great ensemble, you always need something that brings you together. And for us, that was alcohol. <laughs> So all the actors that we worked with were um, amazing performers and you know uh, one concern that I do have showing this film in an international setting is I hope not uh, I hope everyone doesn't assume that all Korean male actors look like that um, within the film you know there's so many handsome and good-looking actors in Korea for example there are around 50 Jude Laws 50 Brad Pitt's always waiting to appear on screen so please do not uh, you know think that all Korean actors look like that. Yeah. I mean, you look great. I have to say, I really want that quote. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, director Bong, you and act actor Song have made now four films together. Is that yeah. right? Do you write with a specific kind of character in mind for him? Mm, yeah, always. The, during 17 years. Yeah. Uh, for Parasite, um, the character that Song plays, and also the original housekeeper with Lee Jong Un and the young son played by Choi Yoo Sik, these three characters, um, I knew uh, I had already agreed with the actors that they would play this role even before I wrote the script. So while I was writing, I constantly thought of these actors to develop the characters. So actually, during screenwriting, is it always keep them in mind? During writing, it, it makes me very happy and you know, chuckling. And, and because I know them so well, I find myself just laughing while I'm writing, thinking about them performing these roles. It's a story that feels very embedded in Korean society and that specific you know, social hierarchy. But it also, I think, taps into quite a universal frustration right now with class inequality. Did you anticipate it being so globally resonant. You've now traveled around the world with it. 
똑같아 싶어 해갖고 놀랬죠. So I was quite surprised to see how similar the reaction was from all over the world. Um, in the beginning, I was actually quite stubborn to fill this film with very Korean details that Korean audiences would chuckle while watching. Um, but ultimately, the completed film turned out to be so much more universal than what I originally intended. I think these days, um, you know, national borders don't really mean much anymore, whether that's good or bad. Um, I think that's um, how the global community works these days. And this is, this might be really fearful, but I think it's because we're all dominated by capitalism. We're all living in this one giant nation of capitalism. And from the very beginning, you see a sibling searching for Wi-Fi. And I think the story is already universal from there. People open up their hearts because wherever you go, everyone is searching for Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yeah, the, the relatability starts right there. It's the, the endless struggle. I'm going to open it up to the audience now. The question was about the ending and whether Director Bong has an idea or a theory of what happens afterwards. Uh -huh. So at the end, you see the boy sort of declaring that he will purchase that house. We did a cruel calculation um, with his average salary, how long it would take for him to afford the house, and we came to the number of 547 years. And a lot of people mentioned that this is a sad portrait of this era of polarization that we're in, but I think what's even more fearful is the thought that this won't actually improve in the future. So in that sense, the ending is not hopeful at all, but I didn't want to paint a false hope with the ending. I wanted to be very honest. And so for Moon Gwang, you know, she's buried in the garden of that rich house, and you don't really see it in the film, but she becomes, uh, the, her remains become a flower. And so I did wonder when her remains would be discovered um, after um, everything that happened. There's this moment of these six people against these four people. How will it end? And you decide, a massacre. And I'm just wondering if there were other paths that you considered after the six have that moment of possible complicité. So I developed this idea in my head for four years, but it actually um, took me four months to just write the script with my computer. Um, and the from the moment the original housekeeper comes back and rings the doorbell, the husband in the bunker, all of that came to me in the last four months of actual screenwriting. So for the first three and a half years, I didn't have that plot line or those characters at all. So everything came to me at the end and the story worked itself out after I came up with those ideas. And so that situation that you just described of, it's funny, but it's also very sad because you have the have-nots fighting one another um, while the rich people, they're completely unaware of what's going on because they never um, cross the line. So at one point you do see the original housekeeper Moon Gang calling the mom, um, you know, sister and, you know, let's uh, let the needy um, and suggest that the needy should work together and they should form a solidarity. Um, but that never really works out for them. And although I wrote it, it felt very sad that that could never work out for these characters. And if you think about it, there was one opportunity for them to avoid the tragedy that happens in the end when the poor mother and daughter, they talk about how they went too far the night before and you know she hands her the meatball and she should go down and talk to them. But from a slip of faith, they missed that opportunity to even try negotiating with the people downstairs. It was the only opportunity that they unfortunately couldn't grasp. So there was once a time when the have-nots formed you know, a coalition and struggled and fought against the rich. But I think we currently live in a much more complicated time and the film really reflects that. I apologize for talking as if it was someone else creating this story when I'm the one who created this tragedy. <laughs> In terms of the tone of, this, of the film, it's like a really delicate balance between a lot of different things going on. So you've got the sort of suspense and the black comedy. Um, and I just wondered in terms of between the writing, the shooting of the film, and then the editing of the film, was there any difference in your mind in terms of how the tone shifted? Or is the finished film tonally exactly what you imagined when you were writing it? I think in the film, the moment the original housekeeper and comes back to ring the doorbell, that's when the tone really shifts and it's like a turning point for the film. But we never really discussed that on set. We just continued to shoot. 
그거에 대해서 네, 한번 사실 그 제가 An hour into the film, the original housekeeper comes back to ring the doorbell, and the story um, heads towards a completely different path. And a lot of people say that at that point, the genre of the film changes. But when we were shooting or th talking about the story, we never defined these genre shifts or tonal shifts. The original housekeeper comes back to the house um, just to negotiate something with this new family that has taken over the house. And then later on, everyone else, you know, starts. Started talking about how the genre shifted, but that was something that we never really discussed. No matter what the visual atmosphere of the film is, all the actors maintain a fundamental, realistic tone that doesn't really rely on genre. They all have such rich and realistic, alive texture to their performances. So I felt very comfortable taking various, um, you know, courses in terms of genre. Um, I really relied on the fundamental reality that they brought to the story. I couldn't pin down the genre of the film if, if I was asked to. I think that's what's wonderful about it. Uh, there's so much more we could talk about and ask. Um, I'm sure we'll all go home tonight thinking about a lot more, but we are out of time, I'm afraid. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Picture House Cinema's unique video content. Hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with our movie news, cast and crew interviews, highlights, trailers and lots more.